Well, can you believe it? We made it through Christmas. Yeah, I mean, we survived to maybe see another one. This is a good thing. And we have cold weather and we have snow coming. I mean, this is, this is Minnesota. This is, I mean, Santa Claus is just up there a little ways. Are we ready? We're ready. Good morning, Bethel Church. Good morning. Yeah. You're all spread out today. Wow. I want to welcome you who are here and who are coming in as I speak. I want to welcome you who are online, and I want to welcome you who will view us during the week. Uh, there's actually quite a few, um, and so I want to welcome you as well. This is the Lord's Day. Yesterday we celebrated the reason we're here, because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. We wouldn't be here otherwise. We'd be somewhere else. Let's be called to worship by one verse out of the Gospel of John. Marvelous verse. The whole point of what yesterday was about. Verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 14. And it says this. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This gets to me. <laughs> and we saw his glory. Glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's who we're celebrating. I'm a lot closer to seeing him than you guys are. But anyway, and that's okay. That really is okay. I'm ready to go. Um, the Lottie Moon offering, which we've been collecting for a few weeks, there's little things like this out there that you can put money in. Uh, it's an international offering, and it's really worthwhile. Uh, there was a brochure like this about some testimonies about where it goes. Uh, and so if you want to uh, donate to that, there are envelopes or there will be a, a one of our collection trays that you can do that. Uh, the Wednesday night Bible study that we have every Wednesday, I mean, if we just keep going, will not happen this week. I mean, it's shocking news. No Wednesday Bible study. What's happening? I don't know. But anyway, there's no Wednesday Bible study this week, but it will be next week. And so, um, if you're not, we'll be back. Um, there is Christmas cake in the back. I presume uh, we'll get that when the service is over. That's courtesy of George's Kitchen, which means I'm sure it's marvelous. Uh, and so you can get some after the service. Um, the, on January 16th, we'll have a baptism, not in the lake. Not in the lake. We are, we are not living in Finland where they jump in the ice. We just aren't. Um, it'll be right back there. If you have an interest in baptism or want to talk to, about it or anything like that, uh, please see Pastor Don. Uh, Crystal. Where's Crystal? There she is. All right. Good morning, guys. So last week I talked about New Life Family Services, and what we're doing is we're kind of doing a fundraiser for them because they're not an organization that's government funded, they're community funded, so people like us. And it's supporting families that are going through pregnancy or babies and just need community support that doesn't have a lot of money right there. So we support it and I have baby bottles that I'll be passing out if you want to grab one and we're going to be doing it through the month of January, this rest of the month and then the month of January and then they'll be coming and speaking more about their organization at the end of January. So if you have any questions just talk to me about it after and I'll be at the door. So yep. Good. It's a really good organization. They serve in a whole bunch of ways, and as Crystal said, they're not funded by anyone other than people like us. One of the complications of sending money to missionaries is you don't know where it goes. I mean, you send your money off and you hope it does something useful, but I can report on what the money that we send to Romania does, and I have a PowerPoint with some pictures Hit it. It's coming. Uh, the people there, our contact, are Alex and Manuela Zilagi. Um, 
By golly, there we are. So this is, we've seen this before, but go to the next one. Uh, the teen, the, Manuela suggested to the teen Sunday class that they help one of the widows in Gostat, which is a village nearby uh, Lugos, and these widows, that's what they are, is widows, but they have almost nothing. I mean, they, they, they have no money and they have no income and life is really hard for them. And many times their apartments are one room, which you'll see, and it's desperate. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, let's see, go back a slide if you could. Maybe, maybe not. Life is one way. I mean, it doesn't go backwards. Anyway, that's okay. This is some of the, the uh, group that were painting um, because a lot of times the, the apartments are just in desperate condition. And then there's the dishwasher. Now, I know that you all have a different dishwasher than that. It's not on the floor, and you don't have to carry water in a bucket from the street. But that's what they use for the dishwasher. Okay, next slide. Maybe. Marching forward. Maybe not. No. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, here they are laying down some tile. Many of the floors are either dirt or they're concrete, and they, so they put down some tile. And then when they were done, the picture on the right is her apartment. That's the whole thing right there. Bed, wood stove to cook and to heat, uh, a little cabinet, and a couple other little things, and that's all she has. Um, so, I mean, this is poor. Next slide. Uh, here, they, at the, once they're done, it's very common to make gifts of Christmas bread. They call it kozonak, uh, and it's a sweet bread with raisins in it, and they go around and give it to everybody. Well, there is the widow on the right, and the team and, one of, and their leader giving her a, a loaf of kozonak, not dissimilar from what we had out there. They're usually, they can either be a pan size or they can be round, uh, and these are round. Next slide. Here's the team in some of their native costumes. Um, this is what our money goes to. And then the next slide. Here they are more officially in their native costumes and Manuela is on the right. She is um, she's the Sunday school leader and probably uh, with the money that we send suggested that they do that for this widow. And then the next slide. This is the Zoggy family. Three boys, <laughs> uh, Adi, Adi and Bernie and Jonathan. Um, and Adi is, what, 18, 19? Yeah. Something like that. So they're up a little bit. Anyway, this is, what our, this is what our money goes to. When we send our 100 bucks a month, some of it goes to helping this widow. Uh, I'll, I'll like the music team to come up. It's just always nice to see what happens to it. And I will turn us over to them. Will you please stand with us as we sing Christmas carols for the last time this year? <laughs>
to be able to worship together today on the day right after Christmas. I'm happy that our Vietnamese church family can be with us. We welcome you to be a part of our service today, too. Thank you. We're going to pray, and then we'll continue our music. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. Thank you for health and life and the ability to worship and honor you. We thank you so much for coming to earth, and we know that not just as a baby, but you lived a life that was perfect. Jesus, to die for our sins. Then you rose again, ascended into heaven, and you're going to come back to receive us. Bless us now as we worship you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth
sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy These next moments in our service are the prayers of our people. When each of us pray to the Lord, and as we're thinking about others who need prayer, if you would please remember them. We have a request for prayer for the family of Patricia Perkins. She passed away on Christmas Eve, and she was Edward Schultz's neighbor. 
Also, we want to pray for the family of Betty Sexton. She passed away last Thursday, and there will be services coming up for her at some point when that will be uh, decided. We also want to congratulate everyone who has a birthday this week. Alexis Smith, Angeli Obda, Siona Madhu, Victoria Mylabathula, Esme Huertero, an anniversary for Steve and Denise Zeron. There may be others who are have anniversaries or birthdays. If we didn't mention you, we want to find out about, you, about your birthday, so let us know and we can have you on our list. Let us join together in a time of prayer right now. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, as we come to you on this day after Christmas, we thank you for your forgiveness. We ask forgiveness for our sins. Help us to be right with you and right with each other. We pray today for all who have birthdays and anniversaries. We pray especially for the Zeron family. As Steve has been ill, we ask that you will strengthen him. We pray for Raymond Hayes family, his wife Sylvia, and his sister-in-law Alicia, who is hospitalized with serious, with serious health conditions. We pray for Betty Sexton's family in their time of grief. We also thank you for her going to heaven because she was so solid in her faith. We pray for Rose Jordan, who is at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Be with Edward Schultz as he teaches his new Bible study and also for his friend David Klein, who has double pneumonia. Be with Vernie McCollum, who has gone to the Good Samaritan Nursing Home. We pray for Dory Woods, her daughter, as she ministers to her. We ask your blessing upon Daryl Bunn. We thank you that he is able to be with us and he's healing from his shoulder surgery. Continue to be with him, we pray, and be with Sheila Massey as she recovers from a long illness. Be with Bill and Joanne Kildo. We ask for strength for them. Be with Tim Gadman as he recovers from his fractured wrist. We pray for Mercy Ephraim for the grief of loss she's had and also for her three triplets, especially Yanni, who has gone through some very difficult cancer as a young boy. We pray for Vicki Lee Nelson, who will be coming soon to Minnesota for surgery at Mayo Clinic. Be with Stephanie Walker as she recovers from hip transplant surgery. We pray for Teja and Navia as they minister to their family and with their new little daughter. We also pray for Bob and Judy Iverson, for health for them and for their daughter, Brenda. Be with all of our students as they are on Christmas break and help them to be strong in their faith. We pray, too, for all of our missionaries, for the Gospel Association of India, for Yesu Bandela, for Danny and Sonny Maila Bathula serving in India, for Jeff and Margie Pearson in Ethiopia, Paul and Jeannie Johnson in Costa Rica, Jacob and Elizabeth Delich in Puerto Rico, Barbara Wright in England, for Napoleon and Dora Maynard in St. Paul, and Chaplain Millet serving right here in our community and as a part of our church family and bless him with some of the challenges and trials he's going through right now. And we thank you today for our Vietnamese Baptist Church that they meet every Sunday and Today they are joining with us, and we're so thankful for them and their ministry and their outreach. We thank you also for the Telugu Christian Fellowship of Minnesota as they had their special Christmas Day service yesterday and their meal and fellowship. And Many people came, even more than they expected, but you were with them, and we thank you so much for their presence here at Bethel and for their ministry in our community. We would also pray today for... Our country, we pray for our leaders, we pray for repentance among all who are walking away from you as leaders in our country. May we find that they are called to you to return to our Christian heritage as a nation. Bless us now as we continue to honor and worship you on this day after Christmas. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. We have many Bible studies in our church, as you hear Randy Nelson announcing every Sunday. And one of the Bible studies that we have is a study called Village Schools of the Bible. 
And we have a, a fall series of, on the Old Testament and then a spring series on the New Testament. And one of our students, Brenda, is going to share a little bit about this ministry and tell you how you can be involved. Thank you, Brenda. Village Schools of the Bible is an organization in the cities that put together a number of courses, and what they do is get the professors, the teachers, they organize the class, and they look for sponsored churches or locations. Bethel has been sponsoring one of their courses, which is called Cover to Cover, and we've been sponsoring it for, I think, seven years now. And what it entails is Cover to Cover starts in the fall, and it's an Old Testament 16-week course. It's two hours on Tuesday nights from 6.30 to 8.30, 16 weeks, and yes, you read through the Old Testament. If you ever looked at the Bible, the Old Testament is the biggest piece, right? But you read through it, speed reading through the Old Testament, and you're learning about what's in the Old Testament. You're seeing the scarlet thread, Christ, in all the books of the Old Testament. Then January 12, uh, Tuesday night, 6.30 to 8.30, starts the cover-to-cover -cover New Testament. In 16 weeks, we'll read through the New Testament, which is a lot less reading, but there's a lot of meat in there. To do the class, um, there's a Village Schools of the Bible website, and you have to commit yourself to reading and attending those 16 weeks. But I tell you, even though you're speed reading, and most people say it's like drinking through a fire hose, you get a little bit of water, but you don't get it all. So you speed read through, but if you commit, go to their website and register, I think the cost is like 150 for a new student, 125 for the course, because it's an actual course, for alumni, and there's a special amount for families. Also scholarships available, but I'd like you to think about it because there's nothing like really reading through the Bible and having instructors there to kind of guide you and helping you to see Christ throughout that whole Bible. It's really eye-opening. And again, we're hoping to start on January 12 if we have enough registered to join the class. And it's open to everybody. It's not just Bethel, we're hosting it. In other words, we're giving it a place, but it's open to everyone and we're hoping a lot of people around the community would join and learn what the New Testament has to say. We have a special song by Norma and Dustin. Okay, good.
Thank you, Norma and Dustin. We appreciate that. I would invite you to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. We will read verses 18 through 25. In honor to the Word of God, will you please stand as we read. Matthew chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to read about the coming of Jesus. I pray today that you will touch our lives. And as I think about our church family, there are many people that we'd like to remember in prayer, and I want to remember especially Herb and Jennifer Colby with some of their challenges right now, and their daughter Samantha. Bless us now as we think about your word. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We've had a busy holiday season, Christmas season. Yesterday, uh, there were so many people here for the TCFMN fellowship meal and, and service. And as they were leaving, some of them said, we probably won't see you tomorrow morning because we've had a full day. But they're here. That's just amazing. So. Thank you, thank you for coming. Pardon me for a uh, uh, throat that's kind of acting up a little bit. I, uh, I have a cough drop, so just in case it gets bad, I'll use this cough drop, but it reminded me of a story of a pastor who was uh, having some trouble with his throat and he put a cough drop in his mouth and he thought, by the time this cough drop is, o is done, then I'll be ready to conclude my ser sermon. But he kept preaching and preaching and the people were wondering, how come he's preaching so long? Well, the problem was, he didn't take a cough drop, he took a button out of his pocket. And so, that wasn't gonna melt for a long, long time. Today we're gonna to be talking about heaven's promised savior. There have been many unusual births in the history of our country. Some of them that I have read about, one was in Ontario, Canada. May 28, 1934, the Dion sisters became the first known set of quintuplets to survive infancy. And they grew up, and for the first decade of their lives, they were the most uh, famous tourist attraction in Canada, even more than Niagara Falls. More people came to see them. Some other unusual births, January 11, 1974, the birth of the Rosenkowitz sectaplets. They were the first recorded set of sectaplets to survive to adulthood. And then seven children were born to Bobby and Kennedy McAfee in Des Moines, Iowa on November 19, 1997. And the, they're the first set of septuplets to survive infancy. Septuplets. Wow, that's seven children at one time, and they survived. But this is the most unusual birth of all, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's the only one in all of human history who was born of a virgin. It was foretold in the book of Luke, as we talked about last Sunday. The angel Gabriel came to Mary and told her that she would conceive and bear a child, 
and that it was the Holy Spirit who brought about this conception. And now today we have read how Joseph was informed that Mary would also give birth to a child. And Joseph was espoused to Mary to be her husband at some point. And every one of the prophets had spoken of a Messiah that would come. And everyone had spoken of so many things that this Messiah would be. He would be a deliverer, a redeemer, a savior. And we know the words of Isaiah in Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. He will be the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And we read back in Isaiah chapter 7, these specific words, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's exactly what happened in Bethlehem, didn't it? That was 700 years before this event. And God knew exactly when Jesus would come. There's a great verse in the book of Galatians chapter four, verses four and five, which says, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those who are under the law. So exactly at the right time, God sent forth Jesus. Jesus already existed, he was in heaven. He was part of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now he came for the purpose to which the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit had designed that he would be the Redeemer, the Deliverer, the Savior. And this heaven's promised Messiah was here in the person of Jesus Christ, that little baby born in the manger. And we think of all the wonderful things that happened as the, the news came when Jesus was born in Bethlehem to the shepherds on the hillside, those humble people who were there. The heavens lit up as the angel came and then myriads of angels came and glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. The shepherds went to Bethlehem to see this thing which had come to pass. And they were directed by the angel to go to a manger. And there you'll find the babe lying in a manger, not in a special place, but just a manger bed. There they found Jesus. And then they went throughout the community, making known abroad the saying that was told them concerning this child. What a wonderful event it was. And today I'd like to have us look at the life of who God chose to be Jesus' earthly father, and that was Joseph. Joseph was not God's real father, Jesus' real father, but he was his earthly father. And Joseph was a man of great character qualities. It reminds me of what was said by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he gave his great speech. I have a dream when he said that we want people to be judged not by their outward appearance, but by the character of their lives. And that's how we want God to judge us too, don't we? Some of the character qualities in the life of Joseph are what we would like to develop in our own lives. So I'd like to consider four of them today. Number one, he was a man of trust. Joseph trusted in the message of the angel. And what a message it was. He and he had found out that his fiance was going to have a, a baby. And when he found out that news, it must have troubled him. Because it says in verse 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly or privately. So Joseph no doubt was troubled. When did he find this out? Probably shortly after the, the pregnancy. Mary somehow notified him and he just didn't know exactly what to do, but he trusted in the message of the angel. And what a message it was, because Joseph was put to sleep. We don't know how he was put to sleep. He just fell asleep, but it says in verse 24 that he was asleep. He probably was troubled, and it's kind of hard to imagine that he could just easily fall asleep. So probably the Lord just gave him rest so that the angel could come and appear to him in a dream. And then the angel brought that wonderful message. Verse 20, while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, 
son of David. Now that's important, Joseph, son of David. That means he does, he's a descendant of David, the great king. He would have been, had there been kings in Israel at that time, Joseph would have been king. He was of the lineage of David. He was from the legal side, descended from Solomon down to Joseph. But of course, by then, long before that, the kings had, not, had vanished from Israel. Now Joseph was a carpenter. He wasn't a king at all. He was just a common worker. But it says in verse 20, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. What a blessing that was for Joseph to hear that message. And he trusted the message of the angel. And the fear that he had, the concern, the apprehension that he had was left in the hands of God. God took over. It says in Galatians chapter 6, cast your burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. And we are to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So God stepped in. An angel caused Joseph to sleep, gave him that dream and wonderful message. The second thing, Joseph trusted in the integrity of Mary. Yes, he realized that Mary, something had happened. He didn't know exactly what, but he didn't accuse her of anything. He didn't condemn her. He knew that she was a righteous person. She was pure. And Joseph was thoughtful. He didn't abruptly disown her. He was thinking about this. What should I do? So Joseph trusted in the message of the Lord. He trusted in Mary. And Joseph also trusted in God himself and the word of God. His dream was very clear and vivid. The message came through. Take Mary to be your wife. And interestingly, Joseph didn't question God. Now, some other people in Bible times who had been called by God did question God. Even that great man named Moses, when God called him, he questioned God. And four different times he made excuses. Lord, there must be some other way. But God kept pursuing Moses. Gideon questioned God. I need a sign. I need another sign. Then another sign that you're calling me. Joseph didn't do that. He just accepted what God said. He believed it. He trusted God. And what a relief it was for him. Thank you, Lord. I trust your word, is what Joseph said. Can we trust the word of God? 100%, can't we? Number two, we're talking about the character of Joseph. First, he was a man of trust. Second, he was a man of honor. He was not willing to shame or to embarrass Mary. Look back again to verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly or quietly. Joseph was a man of honor. He did not want to embarrass Mary. And in those days, in Bible times, the book of Deuteronomy said if a woman is caught in this type of a, a deed where she has had sex before marriage, or if a man was caught in the same, they could be taken before the, the leaders and actually stoned to death. Joseph certainly didn't want that for Mary. He probably thought in his mind, if, if there is some other man, I will release her and let her go to be with him. We don't know what he was thinking, but he said, I will not blame her, I will not punish her, I will not accuse her, I will not allow her to be stoned, I will not bring her before the judgment seat. There's a great verse that applies to us in Romans 8, 1. And we know that Bobby has sung about this very verse. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Can you believe that? Is that really true? If we are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. God is not going to rail against us. He's not going to punish us. He wants to forgive us. He wants to take us into his family because he is a God of honor. Joseph was a man of honor. He was willing to not embarrass Mary. He was also willing to put her away quietly. He was willing to take care of her at the proper way. And he, we don't know exactly what he was thinking, but he must have been filled with love, forgiveness, grace, and mercy. 
He believed in Mary. The Mary that I know, there, there has to be some reason for why this happened. And he just believed in her. And then he understood Mary's dilemma. She must be in a quandary, wondering what can she do. Now, this is all before the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream when these things must have been going through his mind. He cared about her and he was hurt. But we don't see any bitterness. We don't see any resentment, any revenge in his heart. Mary, what did you do? I'm going to get you? No, none of that. It was all kindness toward Mary. He had the heart of God. So Joseph was a man of honor. So we've said Joseph was a man of trust, a man of honor. Number three, Joseph was a man of obedience. We read in verse 20, the second part of the verse, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child. And we read that passage from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. But now Joseph was a man of obedience. And it says in verse 24, Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, now the Lord must have put him to sleep, and it sounds like the Lord woke him up. Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. What did Joseph do? He obeyed the Lord. Even though there were some question marks, now the Lord had given him a clear insight into what happened, and he obeyed the Lord. He believed the Lord. That's what faith is, isn't it? Believing God. Saying, what you've said, Lord, I believe. But as many as receive him, to them, he will give the right to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. Do we believe? Yes. That's why we're here today. We believe in the name of Jesus. We believe in the virgin birth of Christ. We believe in the rest of the story that he died for us, that he rose again, and that he is coming back to receive all who believe in him. And so Joseph was a man of obedience, and he did exactly what the Lord had told him to do. He took Mary to be his wife, and we know there was somewhat of a process involved in this, because in those days, Hebrew marriages were pretty long events, not just one hour or two hours or one day. They usually lasted for at least a week. Can you think of a marriage lasting that long? And they celebrated that whole time. And no doubt, this was the kind of a marriage they had. But during that time, of course, the information must have come out of what Mary's situation was. And Joseph had to bear with Mary the same stigma that she had, that she would be with child. And this stigma stuck with Jesus all of his life. In John chapter 8, verse 41, the Pharisees accused Jesus of being a son of fornication. We're not like you, they said. But Jesus was virgin born. He was the son of God. And they did not accept that. But it says in verse 25, he did not know her. That is, Joseph did not know her. He did not have relations with her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. He kept her as a virgin. And then we know that they had other children after that because the Gospels talk about the children, the four brothers and two sisters at least that Joseph had. They were half brothers and half sisters. Two of them have written books in the Bible, James and Jude. And then it says in the last part of verse 25, and he called his name Jesus. This was the baby that heaven promised. Heaven's promised savior came to the earth. And so the last part of Joseph's life is that Joseph was a man blessed by God. He was blessed to be the stepfather of Jesus. He was blessed to be able to give Jesus his name, Jesus, which means savior. Emmanuel, God with us. So the angel revealed to Joseph a very vital doctrine in our faith, that Jesus is virgin born and that he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He is Jesus Lord at his birth. 
And the evidence for Jesus being God himself kept pouring in as Jesus lived his life. Think of some of these things. The identity of Jesus. He forgave sins, which only God could do, Jesus said. And he healed all kinds of sicknesses, leprosy, and a man who had a withered hand, a person who was paralyzed, on and on, even people who were blind, Jesus healed them. He raised the dead. We know he raised the, the son of the widow of Nain. He raised the daughter of Jairus. He raised Lazarus, who had been dead for four days. Only God could do something like that. He also created food. One time he fed 4,000 people. Another time he fed 5,000 people, just with a small bag lunch. Jesus was the creator. He also cast out demons. He walked on the water. He calmed the storm. He spoke and nature had to listen. He even knew what people were thinking and he could tell them what they were thinking because he knew their thoughts. He is God. No question about it, Emmanuel, God with us. It was Peter who said in Acts chapter four, verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus, name above all names, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He claimed to be God, we know that. It's an, there's an interesting verse in Matthew twenty-two forty-two, where Jesus asks this question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And that is a question that Jesus asked to the leaders and the common people, whose son is he? And once he claimed to be God, there was a question of either believing or rejecting his claim. And many people rejected his claim. Many reject him today. They are willing to recognize him as a great teacher, as a great moral person, and a prophet from God. But many say he was no more than that. He wasn't God himself. But if he wasn't God himself, he couldn't have saved the world. He couldn't have saved us. He would have been guilty of lying and misrepresenting himself. But Jesus is God. Emmanuel, God with us. Well, so far, I haven't needed this cough drop. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll need that cough drop after all if I trip and fall. <laughs> but there's one more thing I'd like to share, and this has really meant a lot to me. It's called One Solitary Life. If you can just listen to this. This was written by a person who was thinking about Jesus. Here is a man who was born in an obscure village as the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another obscure village. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30, and then for three years was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never owned a home. He never had a family. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born, except when his parents took him as a baby to Egypt for his safety. He never did one of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He had nothing to do with this world except the power of his divine miracles. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. Another betrayed him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed upon the cross between two thieves. His executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had on earth while he was dying, and that was his seamless robe. When he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave through the compassion of a friend. Almost 20 centuries have come and gone, and today he is the center of the human race and the leader of all humanity. 
we are within the mark when we say that of all the armies that have ever marched and all the navies that were ever built and all the parliaments that ever sat and all the Congre congresses that ever met and all the kings that ever reigned and all the presidents that ever ruled put together have not affected the life of humanity upon the earth as powerfully as this one solitary life. One solitary life. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. So today we thank the Lord for the salvation we have in Jesus. I'd like to ask our worship team to come and lead us in our song of invitation. This is a song that we can really sing with enthusiasm. It's a song of joy, joy to the world. And while we sing this song, the invitation is if there's anyone who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior, and you'd like to pray and be saved, we invite you to come and pray today with one of us in the front. Or if you'd like to come and pray at the altar, you're welcome to do that. Or if you'd like to come and share your story of faith to become a member of Bethel Church, we invite you to do that. Let us stand together as we sing, Joy to the World. thankful that uh, Daryl you come to share your story of faith I understand I might do that yes okay. hello everybody I'm Daryl Bunn we've been coming here for several months now and I'm extremely happy here and the family's happy here the wife's happy here and, and we love Pastor Don he's a wonderful preacher and I'd like to join your church if you'd allow me to join a little about me. I grew up in a, a good Christian home in a church that was an old rival of Bethel Oakdale Community, Oakdale Baptist Church in West St. Paul. And now I've come here. Uh, I don't have a great witness, that, but my wife says that I do. I used to be a, a power lifter, and I was, I was a very strong person, and I didn't always look this this chunky, but I was, a, I was a very strong guy. And I worked out with world champions, and we were all very stout people. And they liked the party, so I started going with them. And we'd go out at night and we'd drink, and we apparently weren't the best people in the world. But one day when I was working, we had to clean the floors, and I had to hose, and I was uh, squeegeeing out the floor and all of a sudden I didn't see the floor in front of me I could see myself acting like I did to people and how I treated people and how I talked to people and what I did to people and it was just an eye-opener that I could see this it had to be God that showed it to me and I said I will never do this again and I never have and and I've been back to the God back to the Lord and he takes care of us, yes. and I want to, uh, if you'll have me, I'd like to join your church. So, Daryl, I'd like to ask you two quick questions. Number one, you've personally trusted in Jesus as your own Lord and Savior. Yes. Have you been baptized as a believer? Yes. All in favor of Daryl Bunn becoming a member of Bethel Baptist Church, please say amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, you Daryl. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
We're welcoming Thank you. you for today. And if you have a chance to meet with Daryl afterwards to give him your greetings. And Joe, his wife, is a member as well of Bethel Church. I think we have one more song. Do we have that song available for us to sing? Yeah, we can go ahead and start playing that. The chorus for Feliz Navidad says, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. So when we get to the chorus, let's wish people right next to you a Merry Christmas and shake their hand, okay? <laughs> good for us Baptists to get a little bit of energy once in a while, isn't it? <laughs> I'd like to call on Pastor Dan from our Vietnamese Fellowship. Dan, if you would come and lead us in our closing prayer, please. And if you would like to pray in Vietnamese, that's, that's just great. The Vietnamese Fellowship meets at 1 o'clock normally on Sundays. And we're so glad that you meet with us here at Bethel every Sunday. You mean a lot to us. Thank you, Pastor Dan. And uh, which one of you would like to pray? <laughs> I'm here to interpret in case, but he's the little one. Okay, <laughs> okay Dan, you pray and he'll interpret. Uh, yeah, I should, I should pray if you give me my prayer. Tôi xin được cầu nguyện. Là Chúa là Cha yêu thương chúng con. Chúng con cảm ơn Ngài. Cho chúng con có một ngày thánh nhật phước hạnh. Chúng con đến đây để kỷ niệm sự Giáng sinh của Đức của Chúa Giêsu hơn 2.000 năm qua. Chúng con cảm ơn Chúa vì chúng con có cơ hội được thông công, được thờ phượng cả hai hội thánh với nhau trong một gia đình. 
con trong Chúa, chúng con cảm ơn Ngài. Xin Chúa dùng cơ hội này để thắt chặt tình yêu thương, sự thông công của hai hội thánh với nhau. Xin Chúa cũng ban phước đặc biệt cho mùa Giáng sinh năm nay trên các con cái Chúa của các hội thánh để chúng con được nhiều phước hạnh, chúng con được kinh nghiệm sự hiện diện của Chúa trong đời sống của mình và một năm mới thật là phước hạnh trên mỗi con cái của Chúa. Chúng con cảm ơn Ngài. Xin Chúa tiếp tục à, ban phước trên hai hội thánh thì chúng con luôn có sự thông công với nhau, hiệp một với nhau, cùng hỗ trợ nhau trong sự hầu việc Chúa. Chúng con cảm ơn Ngài. Chúng con cầu nguyện trong danh Chúa Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. We're dismissed for a time of fellowship. Remember to take a cake from Georgia as you leave. <laughs>